Mentre a tutti ragazzi sono Vernastro Rieccoci qui con Metal Gear Solid 5 Allora io sto tornando alla Mother Base Direi che però ci possiamo ascoltare un po' di cassette Che abbiamo ottenuto 29 cassette 30 quindi facciamo una quindicina Magari un po' di briefing di Ocelot E un po' di cose Quindi così un po' un video extra per chi volesse vederlo un per un po' di completismo diciamo io quindi non parlerò e ascoltiamoci pure le videocassette You were hospitalized in Dekelia, a British sovereign base area on Cyprus. It's part of British overseas territory that falls outside of Cypriot jurisdiction. You got moved from Cuba's little America right into Cyprus's little Britain. Why Dekelia? <coughs> the UK and the US remain close allies. The last place Cypher would think to look for you is inside their own system. That's what kept you safe in British Military Hospital for nine years. The safest place from a whale is inside its own belly. You were a regular Geppetto. Well, it wasn't Pinocchio who led me out to safety. So who was that guy? Cypher went so far as to attack British territory, burning their own ally. That's how badly they wanted you dead. He said I was in a British Military Hospital. But the doctor had a Greek accent. They hire locally. Easier to trust them. The Kelly is also home to Greek Cypriots, after all. What about the Turks? They haven't returned to the south. Not yet. The Cyprus dispute is still a long way from resolved. The country is just as split as it was in 74. Turkish Cypriots in the north, Greek Cypriots in the south. In between them, the Green Line, the UN, established. And the Kelia sits right on top of it. It does part of the buffer zone between the two groups. Another reason it was the perfect place to hide you. Easy to spot any outsiders snooping around. So how do things stand? Now, last year the Turks declared that the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus is an independent state. Though it's only Turkey that recognizes it. In the past the Greeks and Turks lived side by side in the same villages. There are reasons to fight. Those came from the outside. Greece, Turkey, Britain, America. They all had their own stake in pitting the two sides against each other. But once you spark something like this, it's impossible to control. Both sides build up grudges like debt, without the foresight to see that each act of revenge just fans the flames, and then it's too late for other nations to rush in with peace talks. The embers keep on smoldering. Each nation's arrogance only breeds anarchy. The world is paralyzed by this hunger for revenge. Cyprus is no different. He said I was in a British military hospital. But the doctor... While the Soviets have indicated they are not participating in the Los Angeles Olympics, primarily because the United States has made no attempt to guarantee the safety of the Soviet Union's athletes, the United States is increasingly demonstrating the belief that the issue has nothing to do with its preparations, and in fact this is retaliation for the Western nation's boycott of the previous Moscow Olympics. That concludes today's news. That's quite some news. The uh, Soviet Union not attending the LA Olympics? Yeah. Andropov's death has changed some things. They're calling it revenge for the Western boycott of the Moscow Olympics. Countries boycotted the Moscow Olympics? Yes. In protest of the Soviet Union's invasion of Afghanistan, over 50 countries were absent. It's too bad I didn't get to see Yamashita's judo. When the 40th Army crossed the Amu River four years ago, Detente went right out the window. The U.S. Congress chose not to ratify SALT II, and Reagan's hardline politics won in the presidency in a landslide. According to him, the Soviet Union's an evil empire. <laughs> the Second Cold War. And there's been no end to regional conflicts and civil wars. Lebanon, the Falklands, Grenada, Iran, Iraq. The story never changes. Egypt and Israel did sign a peace treaty. But then the driving force on the Egyptian side, President Sadat, was assassinated afterward. Apparently his actions were considered a betrayal of his fellow Arabs. Islamic extremists? Yes. Fundamentalist extremists have been responsible for some bold acts of terrorism in recent years. We've had extremist students in Iran take U.S. Embassy workers hostage in suicide bombings in Lebanon. 
Over 300 foreign soldiers stationed there have been killed. The countries have yet to develop an effective means of dealing with terrorism. Afraid of losing their own men, they pulled their forces out, handing private forces a golden opportunity. Private forces? Small armies with no national affiliation, working for the highest bidder. That's right, they got the idea from you. After Mother Base went down, they began spreading to meet the soaring demand. Miller's organization is just one of many PFs now. The entire world is after you. But at the same time, it needs you too. Miller told me about what happened in the Caribbean nine years ago. You do remember Miller. You'd formed a private army with him. An army with no allegiance to a nation. I remember, but... I see. You're not sure what's fact and what's a fantasy caused by the coma. It's still all a mess, huh? All I can do is tell you the facts as they were told to me. I've gone easy on you up until now, but this is where the hard stuff begins. 1974, the year before you entered your coma. You were in Colombia, operating with a small unit of men, basically mercenaries. Miller was among them. Miller was trying to find a way to turn his and your talents into a line of work. He was looking to start a business where you would fight on behalf of others around the world, those who needed military force. But the reality was, at that time, you didn't have enough gear to equip your own men. Then Miller came across this client. It was a huge job he was offering, but you had a shot at pulling it off. You accepted it and headed into Costa Rica. The client even threw in an offshore facility in the Caribbean. The mother base. That would be your new base of operations. Miller sure did have a head for business. As your mission went on, your unit grew and grew. More weapons, more money. Before you knew it, you were commanding 300 men. As the organization got bigger, your military power swelled to match. It got so the international community couldn't afford to ignore you. You were just too damn successful for your own good. You, your men, had worn out your welcome. Everyone was out for you. East, West, First World, Third. It was only a matter of time before someone took you down. And that was XOF. Officially, they're an anti-terror unit under the CIA. In reality, they're Cypher's private strike force. They lured you to Cuba using Chico, the Nicaraguan revolutionary kid, and Paz, a mole who worked for Cypher as bait. While you were gone, XOF, posing as a nuclear inspection team, stormed Mother Base. At the same time, C4 they placed on the strut legs went off. The whole thing went down in minutes. XOF. Kisses and hugs followed by a big F U. All because of Miller's blind spot. A back door into Mother Base no one suspected. You remember a certain scientist. Huey was responsible for bringing the inspection team on board giving the enemy a perfect opportunity to hit you at home. You were returning from Cuba when it happened. Mother Base came damn close to taking you with it into the Caribbean. Those of your men out on assignment returned right away. They refused to believe the wreckage in the water they found was Mother Base. But they checked the coordinates again and again until reality finally settled in. You were supposed to die that day. That was XOF's primary objective. As far as most folks know, you did. The first doctor to see you wasn't even sure what he was looking at. Before they'd even finished operating, your men moved you to that hospital in Cyprus. It was a woman named Eva who arranged that. Rings a bell, hmm? Most men in your condition would have been written off right from the start. But you survived. You went straight down to hell and they pulled you out. Your eye wide open. Full of venom. The days of Naked Snake are long gone. Welcome back, Venom Snake. This world still needs you. Here, Snake, try this on. A prosthetic arm. Yeah, Miller was calling it the arm that wasn't there. The physiotherapy's going well. Your arm's bulked up enough for it to fit. There. Perfect. A little time with it, and it'll work better than the real thing. What do you think? Hmm. Huh. I can still feel my real arm. Well, you better get used to this one quick. You have any pain? 
Every now and then. Where? My fingertips. My left fingertips. Uh, sounds like phantom pain. Your brain still remembers your old hand. Yeah. What about your vision? Can you see okay? Yeah, at the moment. Now, the shrapnel in your skull is pressing on your optic nerve. I'm told any hard impact could have an effect on your visual cortex. Yeah, the doctor mentioned that. Your brain might process visual information incorrectly. In other words, you could have hallucinations. You might see things that aren't there, and not see things as they really are. You experience any of that? I think so. When? Right after I wake up. Colors look faded. Colors, huh? Well, that's not a major concern in and of itself, but it could mean the difference between life and death in the field. You'll need to watch out for that. I will. All right. You should continue your physio. We'll be arriving soon. It's the last chance you'll get. Asla. I hear they started calling you Shalashaska in Afghanistan. What's that about? <laughs> you know the term Sharashka? It's slang for a suspicious, hastily thrown together organization. The word became associated with a type of forced labor facility in the Soviet Gulag system. OKB scientists and engineers who'd been convicted of crimes were sent to a Sharashka for forced R&D. The Sharashkas were supervised by Lavrenti Berea of the NKVD, the secret police, under the official name, 4th Special Department. Forest research? That's not very different from what we do here. <laughs> Diamond Dogs is different. Everyone here believes in you. Regardless of where they came from or why they're here, they revere you. And they're fighting because it was their choice. And if it wasn't, they'd leave? Who knows? That's our reality here, whether it's real or not. If there's another truth, I don't want to know it. All that matters is that's the concept that's taken shape in their heads. The traces of a group ideology, our superstructure, to put it in Marxist terms. All right. Go on. Right. So anyway, at some point the enemy started calling me Sharashka. This was after the war in Afghanistan broke out. While I was keeping an eye on you in that hospital, I was also heading up interrogations here. The men I broke gave up their comrades and families everything they wanted to protect the most. No real cause for it. I just let myself get caught up in the old Russian pride. And suddenly I received the honor of becoming special interrogation advisor to the forced labor camps. But the more men I interrogated, the more people saw me as just that, the interrogator. It helped cover my real objective of keeping you safe. You went that far for me. Far enough to keep you alive. I ended up being pretty well known among the Afghan guerrillas. Some of them would have seen me on the battlefield. And that's how I got the second half of the name. Shashka. It's a sword. A type of saber from the Caucasus. Russian dragoons and Cossacks carried them into battle. Now the Russian Empire had a general by the name of Fyodor Arturovich Keller. His bravery earned him the nickname Russia's Greatest Shashka. Someone must have known about that. Because somewhere along the line, Shashka got stuck on the end of Sharashka. The guerrillas were using the name amongst themselves. By the time I got to hearing about it, pronunciation had wound up as Shalashashka. So half Gulag, half hero sword. It was a perfect fit. But you see how rumors and ideas about people can get out of hand fast. Once you create a character and put it out there in public mind, it warps and twists with every baseless rumor. And before you know it, all people see are phantoms. In my case, it works out just fine. I'm plenty used to working under aliases. Ok, ragazzi, direi che possiamo tornare alla Mother Base perché vi devo far vedere una cosetta, quindi Please select a landing zone. Heading to Mother Base. Andiamo qui. Il cagnetto che vi ho fatto vedere prima nella Nell'immagine, nella foto È un cagnetto che ho recuperato Per così a caso da una missione Non pensavo che poi diventasse una parte importante Invece no È, è di D adesso Il nostro Diamond Dog Diciamo la mascotte del gruppo Ogni tanto bisogna tornare alla Mother Base Per risollevare un po' il morale dei soldati Che ne so, li picchi un po' li Spari un po' nella coscia Li addormenti No, sono masochisti, si divertono E 
e gli risollevi il morale, morale una cosa brutta molto brutta è questo che adesso non posso far vedere ma dopo guardate che bellina la nostra mother base che però non possiamo sviluppare ancora nulla gestione della base eh no. gmp ci abbiamo metalli minori no e carburanti manco Guarda che bellino il nostro cagnolino Ciao 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 Io voglio farti le feste Non voglio farti male Ehi Ehi Ma che bellina no, però Io non voglio, non voglio farle male Ah beh, fa fare male a lui sì, va bene. Ho imparato a fare una cosa figa. Ta ta ta, li ciulli l'arma e poi li spari in testa. Comunque, la cosa brutta è questa, che il fucile è distaccato tantissimo dalla, dalla schiena. Quindi non è la cosa più bella del mondo. Però possiamo farci la doccia, quindi sì, cazzo, sì, la doccia. E ci ristaura un po' tutto Ma quanto sei bello dai Dog No io ti voglio guardare tutto però No levati Maledetto Maledetto voglio vedere il Diamond Dog Ma guardate quanto è bello Mi sono innamorato di questo cane Comunque ragazzi Spero che Ok Perché si sì, è giusto così Ok ragazzi, spero che questo rapido video extra vi sia piaciuto, ce ne saranno altri in futuro. Se è stato così lasciate un mi piace, un commento, condividete il video, iscrivetevi al canale e noi ci vediamo con un prossimo video. Yeah. See that in the movies? That's an automatic. Don't bother trying to dampen the recoil. You do that with a revolver. We diamond dogs are now a force to be reckoned with. We've got the world's attention. We're not some tribal militia. So don't act like one. You will learn how a real soldier fights. You will forget everything Hollywood taught you. And if I catch you doing something else, you'll know. Engravings give you no tactical advantage whatsoever. There was some fancy shooting. Pretty good.